Gear Seekers, I'm Nick. I know a lot of other outlets have covered the higher end Ryzen 3000 chips and we've already covered the 3600 and the 3600X and we've done builds with some other Ryzen 3000 chips, but I wanted to do something a little bit different and test out the Ryzen 3 3200G and the Ryzen 5 3400G just to cure a little bit of my own curiosity. I wanted to test them in the same way that we did the 3600 and the 3600X testing, but with a little bit of a slight twist. I wanted to test them on B450 only. Now, there's a few reasons for this. The first reason is almost all of the X570 boards we have currently, they either have no display outputs or HDMI only. And the other reason is because if you're looking for a Ryzen 3000 APU, B450 is probably the chipset you're going to be looking at investing your hard earned money in. So with all that said, let's see how they go with B450. getting one of the biggest things out of the way with these two new third gen Ryzen chips. All the pricing information that we're going to be discussing in this video will be in Australian dollars since that's where I'm from and that's the currency that relates to me directly. With that said, the Ryzen 3 3200G comes in at around 145 Australian dollars and the Ryzen 5 3400G comes in at around about 239 Australian dollars. One of the major differences with these two APUs compared to the rest of the other Ryzen 3000 chips is that these two chips are not based on the 7 nanometer process. Instead, they're based on the 12 nanometer process, which is similar to second gen Ryzen. We built a single test bench with the ASRock B450M Steel Legend to really know how these new CPUs work and what kind of performance you'd get with these two APUs. Also, just be aware though, if you're using B450, nine times out of 10, you will need to update the BIOS on your motherboard before the ships will work. So you'll either need a boot kit or another first or second gen Ryzen CPU. Now it took me about 12 hours of testing to collect all the data because we don't have 10 staff members to help. And yeah, we could only really run one bench because we only had one B450 board. I hope you guys appreciate the crazy amount of hard work that I did today to put this video together. So. Let's get into it. We decided to make all of the testing standardized for comparison with all the other tests we do on the channel, that we could use all of that information so we could jump back to other videos to see how those new APUs stack up. We use one kit of RAM for all of the CPU based testing so there was no discrepancies with latency and timing. We went with the new team group Vulcan Z16 gig kit at 3200 megahertz with the XMP profile enabled. We didn't overclock the APUs at all because we wanted to test the pure out of the box figures. So there's no overclocking numbers here. We just, we just didn't have time to do it. And to be honest, I don't personally care about those numbers. So yeah, all the figures from all the other CPUs we tested were also out of the box as well. Now we didn't have a Ryzen 3 2200G or a 2400G for comparison. So we didn't include any of those figures. So yeah. That's why they're not there, so you don't have to ask. For cooling, we went with the Wraith Prisms, basically because they're the fastest coolers to install and remove when we're switching CPUs. Both CPUs came directly from AMD in retail packaging, but we decided to use the Prisms because they would just suit our testing better. We recorded all of the thermals, but we're not gonna talk about thermals in this video because these chips just don't run very hot and yeah, there's just not a lot to talk about with these chips thermally. There is a lot of other data to unpack in this video as it is. Let's start off with Cinebench performance. We tested with both Cinebench R15 and R20. We have some historical data with Cinebench R15 that we collected and it's also been supplied to us by some of our industry contacts as well. But for now, let's talk about Cinebench R20. All these chips are chips that we have on hand. If we don't have the results for your chip, Oh, more, more specifically the 2200G or the 2400G, it's literally because we don't have them on hand. We only tested multi-threaded performance as well because it just would have taken us way more time to have done it any other way. From our testing in Cinebench R20, it's pretty clear that the 3200G and the 3400G are definitely not the fastest chips on the market. And I guess you already knew that when you came into this video. Let's move on to Cinebench R15. Now 
Again, these are not the fastest chips by a long shot. That's not the point of these chips. They're not designed to be the fastest chips on the markets. The results didn't surprise or amaze me. They are what they are. We ran the test about 20 times for each chip and this is one of the only times that I've ever observed the numbers being exactly the same every single time. So yeah, that's that. Okay, let's move on to the APU performance in our gaming and 3D benchmarks. Now, we made a few adjustments to our regular testing to account for the lower power and the lower performance of these and also because we can only assign two gigabytes of video memory to these APUs. We ran three different benchmarks, all that used the GPU in different ways to see what the performance looks like in different situations. With all of that said, let's start off with Shadow of the Tomb Raider. This benchmark is built into the game and it gives us quite a few metrics and it gives us a good indication of how this game will perform on your system. Let's do some testing. Let's move on to Unigen Superposition. And like I mentioned, we adjusted these for the power of these APUs. So yeah, let's see how it did. The last batch of tests is with the Final Fantasy 15 benchmarking tool. This is an updated version of the tool with a lot more optimizations to make this a far more accurate benchmarking tool, even at 720p, as you're about to see. Okay, so the iGPU performance isn't amazing, but for chips with integrated graphics, I think the 3200G and the 3400G are pretty amazing for what they are considering the price. They're not very expensive chips. I think the perfect use case would be if you're looking for an inexpensive way to build a little emulation slash retro gaming PC, both the 3200G and the 3400G are at the right price point. In fact, our buddy Phil from Phil's Computer Lab does lots of cool PC builds for those purposes. He's used the Ryzen APUs for a lot of those type of builds as well. So if you're keen to do something similar, go and check out Phil's channel. There is a link in the description down there. Go and check him out. He's a nice man. Now this is something that we actually get asked a lot as well. What if you wanted to use either the 3200G or the 3400G as a cheap CPU for your gaming PC with a discrete GPU? Well. We did a little bit of testing with our regular gaming benchmarks to find out. We used the Radeon 5700 XT and the RTX 2060 Super to see how it performed. So let's see how they did. It's 
we can draw a couple of conclusions for the 3200G and the 3400G. One conclusion is that if you want a cheap retro gaming or emulation PC, that both the 3200G and 3400G would be a pretty good option, as long as you're not trying to emulate something like the PS3. I would love to have done a bit more testing with the emulation kind of stuff, but from my many years of experience with doing emulation and all of the data that we've collected, both the 3200G and 3400G are looking like pretty promising CPUs for that use case. Another conclusion that is, if you're in the market for a decent CPU to pair with your more powerful GPU, you're gonna be on the express train to bottleneck city. I hate using that term, but in this instance, I'm gonna use the word bottlenecking. I just don't like that word. The final conclusion is, the value proposition for an ultra budget gaming PC using low settings on either 720p or 1080p. I think both of these APUs are acceptable. Both of these chips in terms of CPUs are very, very cheap. And if I'm honest, the performance for what they are is pretty decent. But at the same time, it's a tough verdict for me since the only time I'd really ever use a chip like this would to be for like a low powered server or for an emulation box. So my pick out of these two chips would probably be the Ryzen 5 3400G because the price bump from the 3200G is just enough to justify the extra dollars. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. If you like this video, you know what to do, tell us what you hated about it. Once again, thank you so very much for watching. I'm your boy Nick with Gear Seekers. You peak, we seek. And yeah, if, if you're in the market for building like an ultra budget gaming PC or like an emulation box or even a low powered server, I think these APUs are looking pretty good for that. Otherwise, if you're trying to pair it with a discrete GPU, go for the 3600. That's my pick. Thanks for watching.